What's up everybody? Welcome back to Valtrek Designs. Today, 2023 G80 M3 all-wheel drive. If you found this video because you've already ordered your mid-pipe and you're looking for the install guide, you found it. And let's get after it and show you guys how to make your G80 have some serious sound. And if you found this video and you haven't ordered your system yet, what are you doing? Get ordering. Because we're going to make this G80, which sounds like this right now, sound like this. So head over to Valtrunk.com to get your G80 sounding as it always should have. Alright everybody, so this install is actually quite simple. Here's the first step. With the Y section of your Valtrunk midpipe, you're going to want to put it up to the factory exhaust and line up where the exit points are. Now on these G80s, we find that if you cut at the second dimple, that's about correct. So first, second, third, right here is where we're gonna cut, right at the second dimple. As we can see here, as we line it up, it's right in the center there, and it's right in the center on the other side as well. So second dimple on this side, and second dimple on this side is the place to cut. So that's gonna be our first step. We're gonna cut the mid pipe here, and then fortunately, the rest of the exhaust is all 13 millimeters. There's 16 bolts, and we'll show you where all of those are. Let's get cutting. recommend doing this step first because then the mid pipe doesn't come and smash you in the face when none of the other bolts are disconnected. So we're going to go ahead and take the other 16 13 millimeter bolts off. Let's get to it. So we're going to start with the four nuts that hold on the downpipes. It's important to remember that if the car already has free flow downpipes, those downpipes do not have pressed in studs like the factory ones do. So it'll just be a bolt and a nut. But these are pressed in so it's just the nuts. You can use an impact. Make sure you're nice and smooth with that. Number two. Number three is underneath here. Number four is up high. Now we're in good shape with the downpipes. Next is right here, there's two bolts that are hiding behind this crossover pipe. One. And the two. And then one, two. On the driver's side. Next one is right here for the exhaust hanger. And this should begin to loosen the exhaust. Next is here on the So once you're at this point and both of the side brackets are released, go ahead and remove this front crossover pipe. With the Valtronic mid pipe, we're not going to be reusing this side of the exhaust. So this bolt here, for this hanger, we're going to leave this one in. As you can see, the rest of the exhaust is loose, it's free of the downpipes, it's just hanging. So recommend, have a friend. If you don't have friends, find yourself a metal friend. And use this to support the exhaust while you are loosening the cross brace. Once we release that, the entire setup's gonna come down. So with your metal friend here, we really do advise having somebody else to support the front while you release the back so it doesn't just slam on the ground. If you're on jack stands, you could probably rest the front on the ground and then you could release this and just put your hand on it as pressure and let it come down. But as we're in the air, 
Um, I don't want to have this 150 pound mid pipe hit me in the face. So we're going to set the camera down and then we're going to do it together. And you guys will be able to see one person up front, another person in the back, taking it down. We'll begin the install of the mid pipe section. Now before installing the new Valtronic mid-pipe, we do recommend if there's some burrs from your cut, checking a file. I feel like Salt Bay with this. Doing this will ensure the clamps have a nice tight seam, that there's no metal burrs on the edges of the pipe so you have that good seal. The next step is to use an eight millimeter box end here. You want, if you have one that has the ratcheting mechanism that is very much preferred because this is very tight, to remove this transmission hanger there are two bolts and we recommend doing the bottom one first and then loosening the top one and then removing this and doing the rest of it by hand. The reason we recommend this is because if you don't do this you'll get this stuck in between the transmission and the body of the car. It's very wacky. Up high here. Loose. Then these are, this can just be spun off by hand, which is nice. And this one is the same thing. You can do this all by hand. It's important again to do this by hand with your fingers, because if you don't do it and you do it with the ratcheting mechanism of the wrench, the wrench will get stuck up there. And then you're going to have to put a pry bar on the trans to like shift it over so you can get the uh, bolt out. But it's, we recommend just avoiding that altogether and doing this with your little fingers. Once that's removed, everything has been removed from the stock mid-pipe configuration, and we can begin installing the Valtronic mid-pipe. So let's get to it. Make sure if during the deinstallation process of the factory mid-pipe, you've got your downpipe gaskets in place. Take the Valtronic mid-pipe, slide it in. With one arm supporting, we recommend just putting one or two of the bolts on so that it's supported. Take your supplied sleeve clamps and with the nuts facing down, slide them on to the factory rear section as such. And then grab the Y section of the Valtronic mid pipe, slide on up front, and you can adjust the clamps accordingly. Slide it up and make sure that you have that perfect seal. With the Y section of the Valtronic mid pipe, make sure the bolt of the clamp is facing down. Slide on as such, and then use your supplied sleeve clamps to bridge the gap. And then you're in good shape to begin putting the rest of the components together, like the cross brace, and tightening everything down. So to make sure the mid pipe does not touch the cross brace, here's what we recommend in terms of aligning the mid pipe and tightening everything down. So we recommend when it's coming time to tighten everything down that you do everything by hand. 
it's just a better way to feel what the bolts and the nuts are telling you if they're too tight, if they're going to strip. Recommend doing everything by hand. Tighten in the center first, push this up as high as it will go to ensure proper clearance on the cross brace. Using a 15 millimeter and your ratchet, begin tightening down the sleeve clamps in the rear. So it's important to remember that when installing this mid pipe or an axle back or any exhaust for that matter, it is kind of a puzzle to make sure that it doesn't touch the cross brace, you've got enough clearance in terms of the drive shaft in the rear, and also ensuring that all the bolts are tightened up congruently so there's not a lot of extra stress and there doesn't need to be. What we're going to do now is show you how to install with the Valvetronic up front. It is does have the squiggles which we like for the better sound. It does make things a little tricky for installation though but that compromise is worth it once you hear the sound. We're going to start by going across so outer, inner and then outer and then we're going to have to do this one that's up high we're going to have to do this by hand with a 13 millimeter socket. It's going to be tricky, but it's the only real way to get up in there to make sure that it's properly tightened down. This one is a little tricky. You got to do this by hand and then we'll get 13 millimeter wrench on that. And we're also going to have to do this top one by hand. So this one you can see, once you got it on the threads, you can move it a little bit by hand, which is nice, but ultimately you're going to need one of these. So now with everything tight, we've got the downpipe section tight, our center clamp here is tight, and then our sleeve clamps back here. It's time to install the factory center brace. Now that the mid pipe brace is installed, you can see if I hit the mid pipe, it's not touching the brace. There are no spacers on this mid pipe brace as of this point. It is possible to get the Valtronic Designs mid pipe to fit with a stock brace, even though the three and a half inch piping. But as we said earlier, it is a puzzle. If you're having trouble fitting the Valtronic Designs mid pipe with the stock brace, you can use some small spacers if needed. We'll show you how. These go on now. Spacer, slide it between the brace and the hole. Stick the bolt through the hole, and you can tighten it up. Same thing on the other side. Slide it into the hole. And you can see now, tight, 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 and tight. And so now, if you want to come here, you can see there's even more space to bring the mid-pipe brace down a little bit. Now, there is the concern that's saying this might harm the dynamics of the vehicle. This is such a minor thing. You can see the brace is about a half inch down. Every, everything else is tight, and this is not going to cause detriment to performance or drivability whatsoever. So this is a possibility if you're not able to fit 
this mid pipe or an aftermarket mid pipe with the factory brace so you are able to use spacers if necessary. Once everything is installed, use some little bit of alcohol and you can wipe down the system to remove any fingerprints and any dirt on the system. The reason why you do this is because once the system gets hot, it's going to react with the oils on your skin and kind of turn a blotchy color. So do this, make sure the mid pipe is nice and clean and then it's all going to turn a nice gold finish when it gets hot. Detailing spray, because it has additives in it, will not be the best thing for this because it is going to leave some smudge marks. So if you have alcohol, we recommend using it. If you have detailing spray, it's the only thing you got. It's better than nothing, but we do recommend using some rubbing alcohol if you have it. Now that the installation is complete, tight, tight, mid pipe clamp is tight, the down pipes are tight, we've checked everything. You can use the remote start on the key while the car is in the air to check for exhaust leaks. All you Europeans out there, we apologize. We Americans are very lucky. We get the remote start as a factory option. One, two, three. And it takes about five seconds the car should start. And now we can check for leaks.